Hey folks, it's Ridgar here. How you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Boulder Canyon. I am just going to get the combine racing on around this way and we get that one lined up down across this field here and this one can start doing the last remaining little bit of the field. It won't take too long for it to do this, I'm hoping. And then... Where are you going? Yeah, you're not supposed to be going that way. You're supposed to be going down this. It's because of where I finished up last time. That's why it's doing that. So we want to go here. And I want to turn you round like that. And then try heading down that way. That would be a little bit easier and a little bit more convenient for everybody involved. There we go. Right, you go and do that. Then you over here... I would like you to start plowing this field. So I'm just going to press H right there. And I'm hoping that he can go and he's just why he's just sort of got the right point on the plow as well. He's going to go whizzing off down across the field down here and he's going to plow up that bit. Uh, we'll stick with this one just until he gets down to the far end and then he can turn around and he's going to start just plowing the field while we use the other tractor. We go back, at, we take that one back to the yard, we will unhitch the mowers, we won't worry about washing them off and everything at the moment, we can do that later on. We will get the baler hitched on and we will race out into the field and we will start baling up that hay we want to do the two rounds around the outside of the field plus little bits around stone then we'll get the trailer on and we can go and gather up those few bales around the outside and then once that's done the chap on the hay turner can carry on turning the hay again and then we can get this tractor back onto the rake again and start doing some more raking around the field okay that's going well so far and as long as you go the correct wait, wait, what are you doing you yep yeah, that's that's fine okay he's doing everything that he needs to do and he's doing everything reasonably well we've got the plowing now underway so we can take this one back to the yard we'll get these unhitched over close to where the uh, pressure washer is so that they are ready to be hosed off. We don't want to wash them off just yet, but we will do. Uh, we're actually at a point where we could go and buy some cattle. We do. We have everything in place, where the, and we could buy the cattle now if we wanted to. We could go and get a whole load of those in the yard there. The only thing is that we'll need to get a load of food in for them, and that's the only reason that I still haven't gone and done it yet. Now, this one you have to unhitch while he's up in the air, unfortunately, because if you try and lower it down, it attempts to unfold itself first, which I really don't like. So, yeah, we could go and buy the cows. I'm not going to buy them yet because that means that we'll have to spend a bit of time um, putting stuff into the pen for them and things like that, and I don't want to do that yet. So what we'll do is we'll wait until we've finished doing the baling and everything, and we're working on plowing and cultivating this field over here. Basically when we've got jobs that are using the hired help to do the work. And where have I put where did I leave the front weight? Oh, it's over there. I went right past it. Uh, when we've got jobs that are using the hired help to do the work, then we will um jump back and we can get the cows and we can hopefully start feeding them as well with various different um, bits and pieces and, and grains and not grain um, uh, not not grain uh, the, the, the other what do you call a um, right with the baler with um, just wondering if we should use weights wide tires and weights kind of thinking that we do want weights because we're working on steep ground but I'm also tempted to do that configuration with the baler so that we've got some added stability because we're going to be going sideways across the hill and yes why not we will do it sideways across the hill does mean that we're going to have some instability on the machine and doing this will just hate 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 to help to stabilize it a little bit 
Um, yeah, if we're doing ploughing and cultivating at the same time, then we're going to be using our bigger tractors, which means that we're not going to be able to go putting food in for the cows. In there. We'll figure something out. We will figure something out for getting food in for the cows and getting them started sooner rather than later. So what I'd like to do, I missed one little piece of corn just right there. We'll, we'll have to come back to that and get that. Um, anyway, that's, that's not something I need to worry about right now. Let's get back into here and grab that baler, if I can, with my great big wide tires on here. Yes, I can, just, only just enough room. I do like the double tire, I, I do like the double wheels. The double wheels are quite awesome. I'm, I'm really, I'm always impressed with the double wheels, I always like them. Uh, right, I suppose really we ought to go down this hill rather than up this hill. It would make it a lot easier for the baler if we were doing downhill rather than up the hill. So we will go this way round. Uh, let's start up. This first bale that comes out is unfortunately going to be straw, but that's not a major hardship. And then after that, we will have bales of hay. So, I mean, a, a little bit of extra straw is definitely not going to hurt. We could do with some of that kicking around so that we've got bedding for the animals. We're going to need plenty of bedding for them. The cows are going to need lots of bedding. And then the pigs eventually are going to need a whole load of bedding as well. There we go. We've got twin wheels and we've got our baler baling hay at the same time. It's actually looking pretty cool. I do like this. Let's see if we can hold that. It's, it's difficult to do it from this angle and have the, the thing sort of... Like, uh, uh, and get it to follow the line exactly when you're doing it from this angle. It's, it's difficult to see exactly what you're doing. I mean, I, I, think, I think I've done a reasonable job right there. I'm, I'm going to come back out over here. I'm much better at sort of doing it like this. I, I can do it sideways on a little bit. I've had some practice doing this with recording time lapses. Because otherwise, you know, I don't, I don't like spending the entire time I'm recording time lapse looking at a vehicle like that. Uh, it gets tedious to watch back afterwards. So, um, yeah, I try to avoid doing that. I tried to get some extra angles in, but it is difficult. Like, trying to do it sort of at these kinds of angles is... is it can be quite tricky getting it lined up. You, you have to really focus on what your front wheel's are doing and try to ignore everything else. But at the same time, you've also got to focus on what the baler is doing just so you can make sure that you are actually picking everything up uh, there's that little bit there is the little tiny bit of hay out I'm going to leave that bit for now and I will come back and I'll get that bit later on uh, that little bit that's out over on the road all the way down over there we will come back and get that later on we go I like baling. There's something about baling hay that's quite a satisfying thing to go and do. Right, Helper G has completed their task. That, I'm hoping, is the combine has now completely finished and has no more combining to do. So I'm just going to pause you a moment and I'm going to go over here. And you have indeed actually finished everything. That's fantastic. So I'm going to drive you off the field. I'm going to... this one little bit here we will tip this straight into the um grain over this side there's the trailer in the field the plow is actually coming along at a reasonable rate so we're going to want to move that trailer off the field i don't know if i can i actually i wonder if i could move that trailer with this combine yeah i'm not i'm not going to try doing that and you've got a ways to go before you make it all the way over to the trailer so we won't worry about that one for a minute I will probably have finished doing this job before we get to the uh, before we reach that trailer so we, we don't really need to worry about that too much we'll bring you on up around here we want to get round this corner next this is why I like the base game baler with the ever so slightly wider pickup width it makes life so much better. It really does. It, it's so much more delight. It's, it's, it's actually pleasant to use the baler. When you've got the balers that just miss the little tiny bits to the sides of all of the runs, especially every single time you go around a corner, it gets so frustrating. And I'm saying this because I have been dealing with a narrower width recently and... 
it has really, really annoyed me. It's not something that's going to be repeated very much. That's um, very quickly going to be replaced with something different. I've got an idea for what I can do to replace it with something different, but I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do it. I'm being a bit cryptic because I don't want to put too many spoilers in because it's for something that you haven't seen yet. So we'll, we'll just leave it at that and then we will move on. We've got quite a bit of hay that still needs to be turned up at the top here. But once we've done our two rounds, we should be able to get the um, turner going again. And then he'll be able to go and do all of the stuff that he needs to do. And it shouldn't cause us any problems. We've got our... Uh, we'll have our bale sort of left around the edge of the field. But I'm hoping that we'll at least be able to get some work being done with the hay turner while I'm going and getting the bales. And then... Obviously, it, once the bales are out of the way, it's it's definitely not going to be any problem for it. Um, and then we can get the rake back into this field and have that doing its work as well. We'll start that one right from the very bottom of the field. And hopefully, he will be able to start doing nice long runs up and down across the field as well without too much trouble. And once he's done a little bit, then we can follow on with the baler and this tractor. So... All of it, it should flow fairly easily. We definitely won't get the baling finished today. That's that's not going to happen. But we might get the baling finished in, like, the next few days. I, I don't know quite how long it's going to take. Now, we're baling at 9 miles an hour. I don't know what the... Whether there's a um, baler that can go a bit faster than that. Actually, I don't know if this baler is a little bit worn... I mean, this, it doesn't look worn. I don't think it's worn out. I'm looking at the... No, the, the list at the top doesn't tell me if it's worn out. I don't have anything on here. I don't have any mod here that tells me if it's worn out or not. Um, I have been asked a few times what that mod is in the top left-hand corner. That's uh, not entirely sure what it's called, but it's on the mod hub. There, there is a mod on the mod hub. Um, it's, I don't, it's not called Glance this time. It was called Glance in FS17. I can't rem excuse me, the hiccups. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but it's, it's not Glance, but it is the, it is one from the mod hub. It's not one that I've gone and found somewhere else. So it's available there. Go and have a look through the list of different mods that are available on the mod hub. Um, for gameplay or, it, it's, it's in one of those categories there that, um, like the, the extra bits category sort of things. Um, it's definitely on there. It, it, it is definitely there, available to be used. I just don't remember what it's called at the moment. Is it? Um, I was wondering if it's called Focus. No, it's not Focus. It's, it's not anything like that. You know, I have got absolutely no clue what it is called. Dis heads up? No, it's not Heads up, is it? I don't, I don't think it is. No, I, I've got absolutely no idea. I, I genuinely have no idea what that one is called. I'm liking these twin wheels. These twin wheels do seem quite cool, especially as the like when we start moving along the sides of the hill working on the steep ground, these twin wheels are going to be absolutely priceless for us. If you look at videos of people doing farming in the Alps, um, like... Swiss farmers doing, um, making hay and stuff like that. Uh, there's quite a lot of videos of farmers using, like, working on some really, really steep fields in the mountains. Um, and the, all of the vehicles have got twin wheels. Like, twin wheels are just standard. And the remarkable thing is, on some really steep ground, they're still working side to side on the field. I mean, not all of them. A lot of it is up and down the hill rather than side to side. But you do see it sometimes where they're actually working side to side on the fields. And, um, yeah, the, the twin wheels there, I suspect, are one of the few things that are stopping the tractor from rolling end side. To, I was going to say end over end, but it's not end over end, is it? It's, um, it's sort of side over side all the way down to the bottom of the mountain. And it's quite remarkable to see these tractors and just how steep the ground is that they're working in. I've, I've watched a couple of videos like that. I um, honestly don't remember when the last time I watched one. Right, I've just now completed a bale. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop that one and I'm going to empty those bales out. We'll back up a little bit like that. And we'll dump those two bales there. Then we'll come in here. What I'm hoping is that the little bit of hay that we get from in the middle here that will... Um, yeah, I know I haven't picked up the entire row there. Uh, the little bit of hay we get from the middle here is, is not going to produce... I doubt it's even going to produce one full bale, but it might. So that's why I emptied everything out first. And in order to get everything in here, I'm just... It's, it, we've got some messy runs. Basically, we're just going to go around here a couple of times, and it's going to make it a little bit messy. We've got one complete bale already. So we could end up with two full bales here and then have another one being tipped out onto... I, I don't want a bale tipped out onto the ground. That was the whole idea at this point, was I didn't want a bale tipped onto the ground over here right in the middle. I wanted to try to avoid doing that so that it was easier to run around and pick everything up afterwards. Now we've got another little bit over here. No, I don't think we will. I think we may just avoid that. Excellent. That's good news. Get that bit right there, and then on over here for the last bit. There was a little tiny spot of grass there that got missed. Let me get it now. There, I've got it. I didn't really want to drive up onto the great big stone there, but I'm sure it'll be fine. And then we go up over here and get that. And that's almost two full bales off of this bit, but not quite. Now, I'm not going to start the hay turner going just yet. We'll wait until we've gotten past the end of the row over there. Otherwise, that hay turner is going to mess up our row right out on the end. And I don't want it to do that. So, we'll drop you down like this. And then we will start along this run here. Once I get round to the end of the run, where the hay turner would be going, I will jump back and we'll start the hay turner going again. And it can then start working on the, the rest of the field that it's got here. If there's a bale gets in the way of it at some point, then so be it. We'll have to just go and pick that up in a minute once we've finished doing this. Um, but I don't think it's going to. I don't think we're going to have any major issues. Because I can actually, I could empty out up here. And then I've definitely not got a bale that's going to be in the way of it. If I bring this up to here somewhere. Can I make a complete bale? And then drop, drop two more of them up here. Yes, I can. There we go. Right, we'll bring you back. And I'll back up a little bit. And I will dump these two bales out right here like this. And then start baling again. Oops. Okay. It didn't start baling. I think it might have been because I was still pushing the bales out. Right, let's try that again. There we go. On down the hill. So we've got that one bale down there. I think that one's going to be out of the way of the turner. I don't think that's going to get in the way of it. I don't think that's going to cause any problems. We've definitely got nothing up the other end by the big stone. So we don't need to worry about that. Which means that we can come down here. And we are now going to need to go and move that trailer. So that we can keep going with the plow just for a little bit longer. So I'm going to stop you there. I'm going to go to this one. Start up the silent electric tractor, and I'll just tweak it back over this way a little bit. So it's, it's going to be overlapping that way a little bit. We'll start you up there. And you are away down across the field. Right, you are going to do just fine going there. Then we will jump down to this tractor right here. And he is going to turn round. I'm going to just do that a second. We'll... Actually, you know what? I could just do a quick manual run along the top here so that I fill in a bit of this with the plow. And that way, when I come back up through here in a minute, I mean, I'm going to be taking this tractor to go and do other things in a minute, so we, we don't need to worry about it too much. Let's lift you out of the ground there, and then I want to run over here and grab that trailer. I'm just going to move it out of the way. I'm not going to worry about emptying it out at the moment. We will empty out the little bit of grain that's in there later on. I want to get a move on and get back up to doing the hay. Because that's the one that we want to keep going for as long as possible. There. Hook you in. And just very quickly move you out of the way. I'm not going to bother starting to tip it out. Because that's extra time that we don't want to take. 
So I'm literally just going to bring you down into the yard down here. And then we can we can empty out, tidy things up, put things away afterwards. So we drop you right there. And then we can jump back up and put the plow back on. So the plow is still going. It's an important thing. If we, it's, As long as we keep the plow going, just, just for a little bit longer. That's great. So we can jump back in here and hook you back on. Oops. Need to quite wiggle around like that. There we go. Right. Put you back on here. I'll do another plow line going back this way so that I've definitely covered this bit right here. Uh, lower you into the ground like that and plow up that little strip there. And then the hired help can keep going because I've still got to just finish the tiny little bit of baling that I've got there. And then I need to come back, unhitch the baler, get the trailer on and start going round and gathering up all of those bales. So if I drop you down there like that, you're away. Then we go back up to this one. The hay turner, no problems at all. It did that just fine. He's back across the field. He's, he's right over the other side at the moment. There, he's turning around over beside the big stone over there. Doing a grand job as well. Right, so we don't need to worry about that one. Now we can bring this one down here, and then as soon as we get to the bottom, we will unhitch the baler and go and get started with the trailer so that we can start bringing in all of these bales. And we'll go and stash these away. We'll put the first lot of hay straight into the mixed feeder, and then more hay after that. That can go... We'll stack some of it up over around the back because we're going to need to make sure that we keep some of the hay reserved back for the sheep because that's the only thing we, we can't put silage bales in we can only put bales of hay in for the sheep so we will bring you to here and we will unhitch that baler right there then we go and get the trailer on we can do a run around the field and just grab up these bales we'll go straight up the steep hill so that we've definitely got those bales out of the way of the hay turner. Although I don't think they're really going to cause us any problems, are they? Um, there's, there's not enough there. Now, I think that this trailer is currently set on collecting bales. Let's have a look. It is indeed set on collecting bales. So we'll go straight up this hill. And we will start collecting bales going up here. I'm hoping that with the twin wheels on, I'm still getting close enough to the bales. Yes, I am. I'm still able to get close enough to pick the bales up, which is a, a, a good thing. We're, we're very pleased about that. And scramble up this hill. Of course, now with the twin wheels on, we've got much larger surface area to grip onto. So there's much less chance of us actually slipping and spinning and, and causing any problems. So we just keep going on around here like this. Now we've got the three bales up here. So we're nowhere near these three bales. If probably be able to go the other way around the field without causing any problems we could have done it more sensibly and gone up the um less steep side of the field i should have uh, technically i should have this on 30 times speed but i'm not doing that because well one i forgot um but also because we wouldn't have done it on 30 times speed anyway because we're in the middle of doing haymaking and we wait until we've gathered it all up so that we don't have grass growing up through the hay which is highly unrealistic so we do keep it on the one time speed just until we finish doing the hay so there's uh 11 bales already that's not that's not too bad actually and that's only like part way round the field twice round the entire field interesting to see how many bales we get from this now remember that one of the bales is a bale of straw but there wasn't actually very much in the way of straw in the baler when we started. There was less than a thousand litres of straw in that baler when we first started. So despite the fact that the first bale out over here is a bale of straw. And then you've also got to keep in mind that we've got a bale and a half still in the baler. I didn't empty out the last bale that was done on the um, time around the field so we could say we can add one more bale to the total that we get from this field all the way around um it says 18 19 bales from two rounds around the outside of the field now these are double size bales remember we do have these at 4,000 liter bales instead of the um except at 8,000 liter rather than the 4,000 liter accepted you know, we really should be doing this with the straps on. Right, as we come out of the field. 
I wonder if I could do that. Let's, let's turn this one round a minute. Try putting the straps on this trailer. Over here. We want to try and do this sort of on slightly more level ground, which is near the fence over there. And then we want to come out of the gateway of the field rather than just driving down over the side. Because, you know, if we've gone to the trouble of putting a fence up here and we have now got stock on the farm, technically, we would have a fence right the way around the whole field. So we sort of bring this one over here. It's, it's less steep here than it is in other places, although they're still not ideal, is it? So we do that, and it's very kind of leany over on one side right here. So now we've got to be very careful. So we're bringing this along the bottom of the field, the most level track that we can find. But this is pushing it for what would be considered stable. And what you want to do when you want to look at stability is you want to draw a line from that top corner there, that top corner there, and you want to do a line straight down like that. If that straight, if that line goes straight down, hang on, if that line going straight down from there goes past the center point of the trailer, then it's, you know, it, it's going to tip over. You've got to keep in mind that you've also got to, it's not just a visual thing, it's the weight. So the weight of the bales is slightly less than a trailer, so it will allow it to go slightly past the center point. But you, what you're looking at is the outside, if the weight was perfectly evenly distributed across the entire trailer with the bales as well, then once the corn, top corner of those bales went past the center point on the ground of where that trailer is, over he goes. That's the end of that trailer. Um, and that's, that's what the stability thing is. And then, of course, you've got inertia and movement. So if you go over a bump and the weight sort of starts to head over in one direction um, and then um, it tries to stop, this, you've, you've then got the inertia of the... You've got the, the movement of the trailer is going to carry it on and that goes on... It, it, like, throws it past that center point and it causes all sorts of problems. So that's, that's the kind of thing that you've got to be very much aware of. And that is why twin wheels are really good on steep ground. Because then, instead of the top corner of your cab going past the... No, it's not the center point. It's not the center point. It's, it's when the top corner goes past the... Out the bottom edge of the trailer down there. Um, that's, it's, it's when the center of the weight... The, the outside edge of the weight sort of goes over the, the edge of the... It's something like that. Um, but anyway, yeah. It's you, you draw a line. You, you draw a line. Is it the center of the trailer going over, out over the bottom edge of the um, outside wheels? Is that it? Or is it the top edge going over? Uh, I think it's actually that top corner. You draw a line straight down. And if that goes past those wheels there, then it's going to tip over. So it's the same with the cab. If that top corner there goes past the bottom line over here, right down on the ground, then he goes over. So if that line there... You've got it a lot steeper because you've got extra stability on the wide wheels here. That's why you're able to go on much steeper ground. Something along those lines. It's not an exact science. Um, I'm sure it is actually an exact science. Um, but when you're driving around, it's not an exact science. You just kind of guess as you're working your way up and down as to what it might be. Um, but anyway, what we want to do is we want to do a quick drive up through here. And we want to unload all of that hay into there. And then we want to drive around again, and we want to unload these bales into the bit in here. And then we can hop over onto the Deutz tractor, we can pick that one up, and we can start doing some work. Um, we can get the rake going, uh, get underway again. So I'm just going to bring you back over here. Right, okay, so we've dumped all of the hay in there. Remaining hay, I'm not going to drop into there. So stop you, I don't need you for a second. And we go and have a look. What do we got in here? We've got 182,000 litres in there, 199,000 litres in there, and 133,000 litres in there, with 85,000 litres of mixed ration now being available for our cows. So we've got plenty of food for the cows at the moment. You have now gone all the way across the field and... Have met up with both of them, and it's neat and tidy all the way across as well. You are doing a fan schmabulous job. That is excellent. You over here 
did one more pass and then gave up, didn't you? So, I mean, obviously, the, the person that was sitting in the tractor there is no longer employed by us. That they, they already realised that they were fired and they slunk off with their tail between their legs. I can't imagine why. It's not exactly rocket science to go and just, you know, keep ploughing the field. But never mind. That, that, that's fine, you know. We, we, it saved us the hassle of having to actually fire them. Um... We are going to go and get the rake on now, and then we're going to start with the hired help doing the raking in the field. And as soon as the hired help has done a little bit of the raking, we can get the baler back on, and we can start baling this hay as well. So we're going to get everything here. I'm going to start trying to use the entrance to the field that we've got. Maybe I might even put a stone wall along the bottom of the field there. So that encourage us to use the actual entrance to the field that we made. We went and spent a lot of time making an entrance to this field. So as we've made an entrance, we may as well actually use the thing. So we get this one unfolded. I'm not going to start this one today because we've run out of time. So I'm just going to unfold that one like that. That is now ready to go. And I'm going to stop that one. I'm going to move up here to the hay turner just to finish things out. And that is it. <laughs> it is indeed it. It's decided it doesn't want to do anymore. That particular person has decided that he doesn't want his job anymore either. They, they don't like working when they get up this side, do they? They absolutely don't like to continue with employment from this side on. Um, but I will I'll drop that in air like that and you're away. Um, but anyway, if you've enjoyed the episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.